the what's up today is wednesday august 19th 2020 right now it's 2 13. it's been a while we're gonna play some chess online together and let's go ahead and get started so i was playing some puzzle rush a second ago and there were a couple of puzzles i got kind of stuck on so i might look at those real quick and i might ask my students to give their two cents as well Okay, so in this one is white to move. Let's see. Yeah, I want to play problem, of course. Ah, so when you're doing puzzles, you want to, of course, look at the whole board. And so right here, I was focused on this bishop right here. And I didn't see the whole board and what it had to offer. So I'm going to ask my students this question. What do they think the best move for white is in this position? Um, there are a couple of things you could do here. I think in the game I played bishop to c4 with the idea of playing bishop takes pawn right here. But unfortunately, it, it didn't uh, work out that way. So I'm curious to see if my students can figure out this um, problem right here. Um, so one thing in this position for sure is you want to look for the checks and you want to look for either pieces or squares you can attack with your pieces. Also, you gotta be aware of the pressure that's on your position as well too. So most likely, whatever move we uh, come up with, it has to be a move that's going to address this right here, too. So usually a check is going to be the best move here. And I think I see, yep, I think I see the, the answer here. All right, let's see if my um, student found the answer, too, before I say it. All right, so you're right. Bishop takes on h7 is winning. And here, there's a couple of reasons why. So black has only two options after the bishop takes on h7. If he tries to go here, then the bishop can back up to here or even here. And, you know, this is discover attack, and you'll win the bishop that way. And after this move, if the king goes here, then rook check forks the bishop and the king, and you win the bishop that way too. So... That's the answer to that puzzle right there. So if I go back for one second, how can we know in the future that this tactic can work? Well, first of all, you always want to consider your king, your opponent's king's options. So I actually taught this last night to one of my students. I was telling her, you know, you want to make sure you're picking checks that are going to restrict your enemy king's options here. So this move is a good move because you're attacking this pawn right here, but it's too slow. And also, you know, your opponent has an option now to move the rook somewhere or to attack the pawn and give his king another square to go to. So if you go here immediately, he has only two options. And if he goes here, you're opposite the rook. So that's bad news. And if you go here, well, we just saw the tactic, of course. So... That's how we know that that tag that was going to work out. All right, let's do, an, let's do another one real quick. All right. Now, this one I was a little, I'll be honest, I was really struggling to find the answer. I think I had like 20 seconds left on my, my um, Pulse of Rush time right there. I played a move Rook E2 with the idea of attacking this pawn right here and all that good stuff, but that's not the best move. So same thing, I'll ask my students to try to find the best move for black in this position. And this one's a little, it is a little complicated. Hmm. Ooh, actually I do see it. I had, the, I had the right idea when I was playing this position, 
but I um, executed it the wrong way. So there's a tactic here that's a very powerful tactic. And I'm wondering if my students can see this tactic two moves deep. So this kind of puzzle is going to take one and then two moves to solve. Is if white doesn't, if white's not careful, this could be a checkmate in two uh, position. So I'll just say you always want to look for ways. So anytime you're solving a puzzle, you want to ask yourself, you know, or you want to notice rather that your pieces are opposite, important pieces like this. Okay. And you also want to ask yourself. So at, in any puzzle, where the checks, the captures, and the attacks, how can we attack other pieces? And there actually, there, there's actually one move that does both those things, capturing and attacking another piece. And those kinds of moves are quite powerful, and it also threatens at the exact same time, checkmate two, or well, actually one at that point. So for my students, I'm going to ask them, um, find all the possible captures. And I want you to think about this, you know, once you find that capture, what should the follow-up move for Black B after that? So while we're waiting, I'll kind of talk for a few minutes about some things, uh, I guess some housekeeping stuff. Yeah, I've been working on my rating on uh, chess.com. I'm up to 1840 something, I think, right now. So I broke my my goal of breaking 1800, which is awesome. I did play in a tournament last weekend on Lee Chess, and I got that video up on my YouTube channel. If you want to watch that, of course. So a little plug. Uh, my YouTube channel is called Chess with Mr. Morton. And if you type that into uh, YouTube, you should be able to find it really easily. Uh, I do these kinds of videos mostly for educational value, but I do do videos, you know, to just to get my, my name out there, if you will. So if you watch this video in the future and you want to subscribe, that'd be awesome. I do do content like this, and my goal is to become a bigger YouTube channel in the future. It's going to take a couple of years to do so, of course, but you got to, you all got to start somewhere. All right, I think my student might be having a couple issues with finding the best move here. So let's talk about possible captures. One of the captures I consider when I was uh, looking at this puzzle was Rook takes pawn right here with the idea of capturing but then the queen could just block the check, so it's not gonna be good for you. Well, actually, if, well, here's one thing. Rook takes, pawn takes, queen takes. If queen blocks, you only move. You could take the rook in the corner, at least. Actually, this puzzle is kind of weird. There's actually a couple of different ways you can solve this puzzle. And here's how. So, I mean, this actually does work because the king cannot go here because the bishop controls that square. So rook takes, pawn takes, is fourth. Queen takes pawn. The king cannot go anywhere else. He's stuck in the corner, so you have to block. Queen here, and the queen has to block. And then, oh, my bad, wrong piece. And then that's checked me, actually. Huh. I, I actually was looking at a different, um, problem here or a different solution another way you could do this solution is queen takes pawn right here you're attacking the rook and you're also threatening rook takes pawn checkmate automatically because the pawn's pinned now so both of those are of course possible answers here now i'll ask my student um which one should we go with should we go with queen takes pawn or rook takes pawn check which capture should we go with? And it does, I think it does make a difference. I 
And I think it did a good job of analyzing the position. So it should be almost obvious which capture we should go with. Yeah, so as he's thinking, um, one thing, so I was able to find an answer by just considering all the captures and thinking about the position in my mind. So visualization is always an important skill when you're doing chess like this. Queen takes on d5 is a strong move, but I think, I haven't seen the answer yet, so I'm not sure what the answer is, but I think the answer is going to be rook takes. And here's why, because all Black's moves are forcing. That means you have to take and at least checkmate. The issue with Queen takes um, pawn right here is, you know, White can just defend mate by doing something, you know, like let's say king here, whatever, and sure, you get the rook, but you don't get checkmate. So, and I'll show you what that looks like in one second. Yep. Uh, so that was the answer. The answer was, of course, taking advantage of the weak king position. So if I want to go back for a second, This, let's go to the analysis board. This one's a, an interesting one right here. So if queen takes pawn right here, here's the issue. Either king here is one possibility, that's minus four, or even better, rook f3. Which blocks this whole idea right here. So if you take the rook, and then it's equal for both sides after that. So that's why, I mean, this this does look like a good move, but here's the thing. And this is something that I find myself getting in trouble with when I play my games. This looks like a good move, but you give your opponent options. So if you remember my last puzzle, and that might be the thumbnail, the thumbnail for today's video, restricting your opponent's options. That's a really good um, theme for today's video. Let me just write that down real quick. It's kind of like um, being a kid. So if you're a parent, you don't want to give your kid too many options because you'll spend all day long thinking about stuff. Same thing here. If queen takes here, white has a lot of different options to respond to this capture, as you saw, and it doesn't lead to checkmate. In fact, it leads to an equal position. If you take here, though, Everything's forced. You're forced to take in this fashion. After queen here, that's checkmate, of course. So yeah, so in chess, you want to give your opponent less options because as you see, forcing him to make certain kind of captures might lead you to checkmate, okay? That was a pretty good one. I'll do say so myself. All right, here's our last one we'll look at real quick together. The last one I got wrong, that is. All right, King H, uh, King G1, sorry, to protect the queen. So once again, um, find the best move for black in this position. And this one, I think in this um, game right here, I want to say... Ooh, I see. Yeah, I think in this position, what I try to do under time pressure was play queen here. But there's a better move than that. So, but first, though, find the first good move for black here. What's the best thing for black here? And one thing you want to always ask yourself is, what pieces are vulnerable to attack? So this rook is pretty well protected right here. This queen, of course, is under attack. But there's another piece that's also vulnerable in this position, which is this knight right here. This knight is unprotected, and there are tactics to take advantage of that, of course. So queen here does attack the knight, but after, you know, queen takes, bishop takes, knight can now move somewhere else. So what could be a better move here for black than just queen to e2, like I played in the game, or puzzle rather?
And this kind of goes back to um, restricting your opponent's options. Because even if queen here, white has moves like knight to uh, d2, protects the queen. Well, actually, no, not, that's actually a bad move because <laughs> the knight's still unprotected in that, on that square. So if queen here, you could play moves like knight here, perhaps, or maybe pawn here. Protect the knight as well, too. If you want to look for moves in chess that's going to force your opponent to uh, respond in a certain kind of way. So, as always, look for checks, uh, captures, and ways to attack pieces. So, in this case, um, queen, oh, queen here does attack the knight, but it doesn't work. So, you should be looking for other possible checks. Or captures here. So um, queen takes doesn't work, of course. Um, we have queen takes here. We could attack the knight this way, but then the knight could just move here, let's just say, and he's pretty okay in that position. Also, you know. If pawn, if pawn here and knight here, don't forget that our own vicious under attack too. So there is that uh, possibility as well too. All right. So for the interest of time, I'm going to make the first move and we'll ask my students to find the second move. So the best capture here is queen takes queen. And then can my students find the best move for black in this position? Yeah, it's a pretty nice day outside right now. Um, yeah, of the town, well, of the town that's recording, I'm getting prepared to go back to school because I'm a school teacher, of course, hence Mr. Morton. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really busy this uh, these days getting stuff done. Uh, H pawn D5, hmm, interesting. Well, I mean, you gotta move the bishop so you can protect the bishop, but in this case, move the bishop to here is better because you also take the knight out. So if I go back for a second, so when you notice that your piece is under attack, just like the king, you want to ask yourself, can I move this piece somewhere else? Can I attack something? You know, in the process, cap attack it, of course. Now, if you do go here, you know, well, I can play h3, you're forced to move anyway. So, I mean, this is going to happen regardless, I think. So, that's the answer right there. Uh, let's go ahead and start playing a quick game. Well, not a quick game, but uh, I game a chess real quick. This was a game I was going to show my students today. It had a lot of interesting ideas, but I think I'm just going to start playing. I think I'm going to play 10 minutes just to have enough time to think and not lose on time. So let's hope I um, do well today, of course. Mr. Monkey Man, I think I played this opponent before. Always pre move, takes on d5 because of the Scandinavian defense. It's just a force of habit. All right, Roy Lopez position. Bishop to b5, attacks the knight, put, puts pressure on the pawn right here, that kind of thing. Though normally you don't take the knight unless you want to go for an exchange variation of the um, Roy Lopez. But uh, I don't usually do that myself. Usually I do castles. If knight here, I'll do pawn here to protect the pawn, of course. I'll protect the pawn, of course. If pawn here, I'll push. Takes, takes with the queen. And they take the knight out later on, of course. Oop, don't want to pre-move. Because we know what happens when you pre-move and you your opponent makes a move and all that stuff. Yeah, this is another variation too. 
you gotta be careful of this queen move, attacking this pawn right here, and also attacking the bishop, which is unprotected. So I usually just castle here. And I'm just gonna play a solid move. Maybe get my bishop right there at some point. But I'm just gonna challenge this pawn while I have a chance to do so. I got moves like this, putting pressure on that pawn some more, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And also, if he takes, my idea is to take back with the knight, of course, and hopefully be good here. There are some tactics on this pawn right here, but it doesn't work at, in this um, moment right here. So let's go take back and just play it here. Um, this is an idea, but the pawn hangs though, so I have to play here first. And he's going to castle, most likely. Uh, anytime your opponent being kills his bishop, so plays like g6 and bishops right here, um, you want to try to trade off his strong bishop, you know, for, I was going to play queen here. Hopefully he'll take me, of course, that'd be awesome. But yeah, once the bishop bishops are off the board, then there are some dark square weaknesses you could take advantage of in this position right here. He'll play either this or this. Yep. On here, most likely. Nothing to be concerned about. Now, I do have this backward pawn right here, but right now the position's closed, so I'm not too worried about this pawn right here, though this could be a strategy for Black to target this pawn right here at some point. Now, I'm looking to make, so after, I think I might take at some point and then play f4 and f5 to open up position. Interesting, he's going to play that move. Well, under attack, I mean, I could play this move into this move, but you can always play a move like this, and then my knight's kind of sideline. So I'm going to play this move and just be looking forward to either get my knight right here at some point or whatever, and he's going to try and open up the position. But I'm going to take here first. Okay. I kind of want to put my knight right here, to be honest. Um, I could always take. Actually, I am on this pawn right here. It's unprotected, so he made a, a blunder right there. So I'm up a pawn now. And in this position, I could take with the queen or the pawn. I think taking with the pawn is the best option because now the pawn can be protected by another pawn and is safe and all that good stuff. So I'm liking my position. He um and we'll look at we'll we'll look back at the position once I'm done. But yeah, uh he didn't uh, execute this pawn advance uh, appropriately if you will so Interesting move. Now, for my students, he is attacking the knight right here. So anytime your opponent's attacking a piece, you want to always try and um, attack something that's of higher value, in this case, the queen. So yes, the knight's unprotected, but the queen's worth more than the knight. So if you take the knight, I'll take your queen. And that's how, that's how, that, that's how that all goes down. Now, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of tactic right here because the king's right here. So there should be some kind of way of attacking something and also just, you know, so check. The king might push the pawn. He might go here. Um, kind of like this move. I mean, I got this move. Actually, let's try and provoke a weakness first. 
if he plays this move, it allows him to play this move, and then this is just crushing right there. Yep. So you see how when you force your opponent, not, I mean, he wasn't forced to, but he chose to do that. Now he's just almost losing this point, right? He has to play his bishop back. Ooh. Ooh. Nasty. He didn't, he didn't see that. That's so obvious, dude. Resign time. Go home and cry yourself to sleep. Yes. He's going to go home and eat a banana and cry himself to sleep. Wow. That was a fast game. In 1825, so even though he's rated, you know, 1800, even 1800s can make mistakes, of course. That was a fast game. Um, and I think it plays along with our restricting your opponent's options kind of nicely, if you will. Let's take a look at the analysis board real quick, and then I'll play one more real quick before we, we wrap up. I was kind of hoping this game will last a little bit longer, but... Um, Sometimes your opponent makes some blunders in the, in the in the position. So let's just go through the game real quick. Yeah, so here's a little tactic for my um, students. Yeah, I have fall, fallen for this before. Uh, sometimes I play this move first. And the issue with this move is that now, well, not, that's, that's a extremely bad move. Um, so let me go back real, real quick. Um, there is a move where, oh yeah, there is some move. I I, I gotta remember the sequence. Um, I, 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 well, I can't remember the sequence right now. I think. Um, well, after castles, this move is a threat because a lot of beginners. They might not see that their bishop's hanging, so you always want to make sure that um, you don't let that happen. And there are positions where this bishop is under attack with check, so you lose your bishop with check, unfortunately. So okay. so far, it's look good for me. All those green stars means best move right there. All right, good moves on his part. All right, d five's good. Now, here's the issue. So, so let's go back for a second, actually. After this move, his pawn's unprotected, so he should have maybe captured here or maybe play a move like c5 to protect that pawn right there because now... That's the best time to take. So if I go back for a second, if you're not sure when to, I guess, initiate that capture, you know, waiting for moves like this, wow, she got free pawn and all that good stuff. So take there first and then take the pawn and now you're up a pawn, of course. Hmm, interesting. Queen C3 is better at this point. Well. Yeah, and let's go back for a second. So after take, I mean, not takes, after uh, check, I mean, this is just such a weakening move right here. I mean, but in this position, this is the best uh, diagonal for the queen right here. So, of course, you want to play this move eventually. And I was trying to see where his king would go to if I do play this move. So if he would have went back here, you know, moves like this, and just putting pressure on this pawn right here, always, always good strategies right there, uh, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, too. I'm just trying to think, too. This takes, yeah, I mean, this, well, we'll go to my next game, but I'm just thinking of different, um, like if king here, knight there with the idea of maybe sacrificing, and maybe hop into here with the threat of something later on, of course. But let's go ahead and go to my next game. I, I mean, after this move, 
Yeah, I mean, it's just game over at that point. So we'll play one more. One more 10 in the game. And hopefully I do well this game. Hi, right, baby, you're going down. Yep, so this is what I play against the Sicilian. Queen takes on d4. Uh, you usually take with the knight, but uh, this is my little pet variation, if you will. So let's see if it works out, of course. You pin the knight, bishop here, you take the knight immediately so you don't lose your queen and all that stuff, all right? He, he can't take your queen because he's pinned at the moment, so all right, he's going to challenge, so takes, takes. And anytime my opponent, you know, has this kind of structure right here, um, I'm just calculating for a second. I'm thinking about playing a move like here. So if takes, pawn takes, of course. If here, takes, check, rook here, and then recapture. That's another way to do it, of course, too. You have to go this bishop back somewhere. An interesting moment right here, for sure. Let's try this out. I don't see anything wrong with it. He might play here, if I had a guess. He might take. If he plays here, then I have this check, and I'm going to win the knight in that case. So if he does this, oop, always look for, of course, checks. So he can always back the bishop up at that point, too. But let's, look our, let's make our opponent think for a little bit. So takes, all right, he's going to go down that variation right there. Check here. And not queen here because the knight would take a course, but um, right, let's go. Let's go here specifically. So if he takes, I'll take back, of course, with the queen. I'm on this pawn right here. Yeah. He might try and move like knight to uh, h5, or he's going to take immediately. I'm liking the move. So if you're not sure, this improves my knight. So I'm thinking about that move to attack the bishop at least. Queen takes is also interesting too. Because you're on the pawn right here. I'll take there. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, he, well, he has to play this move now. And. Yeah, I'm just trying to calculate a couple of variations real quick. This is also a move right here too, just attack the pawn directly. So, but if I play here, he'll just play rook here. So many good options, so many good options here. And I do have time to calculate, well, just a look at stuff if you will. So if bishop here, he does have knight here as well, so that's a bummer. Let's just go here. Knight bishop there, no surprise. And let's get this rook involved in the game. And I'm threatening to take the knight. If bishop takes, I take the pawn right here. All right, he sees, oh, phew! Oh, this is where, oh my gosh, this is where it, it, it comes back. 
the mouse slip of doom. Now slip of doom. Oh my gosh. Maybe you want a draw. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, he's good. He's gonna give me a draw. That guy's the awesomest guy ever. Thanks. Wow, that, that is some good sportsmanship right there. Wow. Let's look at his message real quick. That was really good. Oh, I got to make my move real quick, though. Wow, that was really good. I mean, uh, usually most people are douchebags online, and they'll just be like, hey, hey, you, you lost your queen. Hey, hey, I'm not going to do anything else. They'll just take the queen for free. But this guy was a really good gentleman. Uh, that's uh, I'm glad this guy on video because, um, you know, most of the time, people are douchebags um, bags online. They might be like, oh, you, you're blowing your queen? Well, too bad, son. Um, I'm going to just, um, I'm just going to win this game right here and make you feel bad about yourself. That's a really nice of him. Uh, that that, that kind of made my, that made my, um, day right there because most people online are not like that of course trust me i know <laughs> all right well in that last position i mean i took the pawn with my queen but i was trying to um i guess find a different move than that but that's you know in the past. So let's um, let's try and focus for a little bit. So what what is he what is he thinking about? He might be thinking about this. So after this, oh he's gonna go there first. Interesting. Interesting, good sir. Uh, that might be a good move for sure. So I'm gonna jump in and force him to take something all right and i think my bishop so if i take with the pawn his knight has to move somewhere of course how should i recapture here well let's let's take with tempo that's never a bad thing in those situations he might play, if he plays here, I'm going to take the knight, of course. Yeah, so I think if you go here, of course, I just take and then take your knight, of course. Um, he may have to go back home. Oh, he's going to go there. That too. All right, so let's just challenge the bishop, of course. We could play moves like this, and after pawn there, then damage the structure. That's always a um, good move right here to try and make. But I think I might play this move. So if here, takes, well, takes, takes, doesn't really work at this point. So either I'm going to have to take, the knight or just back up. I'm just gonna back up. Because I want to play this move and open up the position and get my rook in the game. So you always want to look for pawn breaks to get your rooks active in this kind of way right here. Pawn here. Oh, <laughs> bishops don't move like knights. Uh, so pawn here, bishop there. I'm looking to make this move next. All right, he's gonna allow me to do it right now. And now he cannot play this because I could just take. Very key thing right here. All right, he's gonna take. Now, this is a blunder because you can always fork the two pieces right here, unfortunately. So let's see, how do I wanna proceed from here? Hmm. 
because I could go here, pawn there, bishop back to challenge this bishop right here. I kind of like that move. So if pawn here, I just going to back up. And if bishop takes, I'll just take with the I think with the rook and just double. And my next move will be to play a move like this in order to open up his position. Now, rook here to here is, is a threat as well. So I do have to be a little careful of that move. It doesn't track my queen, but it is a little annoying though. So my opponent's up on, well, he's up on material, rather. All right, if queen here, I'll just take the pawn, takes, 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 takes on the knight. Rook here, take the pawn, pawn takes him up a pawn in this situation, which is awesome. If queen here, I still take the pawn, and he's going to do that move. Interesting. That's a good move, actually, because if I go here, he's going to hop into that square, I think. So let's go there. He might go there. He might just double. Might, well, put his rook right there, sorry. So I'll double as well. Hmm. He's going to take. Take with the pawn or take with the queen? That's always a, a question here. I think I want to take with the pawn here. Just because I want to, you know, give my king some breathing room a little bit. And I want to maintain pressure on this pawn right here, ideally. All right, he wants to he wants to hurt me in a lot of bad ways. Rook here is a blunder, of course. All right, he's going to play that move. I'm thinking about sacking. So making this kind of move and just... He is up a pawn, though, so I might not want to. If I go here, takes, takes, I'm on this pawn right here, fortunately. There. All right, I think. Well, see, here's the thing. Queen here is going to hurt some kind of bad. So if queen here, queen here, check. I can block, but then, oh, uh, well. Yeah, I think that works out. So here, queen check, I can just block. He doesn't have queen check here. So he has to move his queen somewhere else. And of course, yeah, I think this works out. We shall see, of course. If he takes, I'll just take back, of course, and everything's cool. As the old song says, everything's awesome. There was an old song when I was a kid that was, was kind of like that. Everything was awesome. I can't remember what the rest of the song was, but I remember that part, though. Everything's awesome. He might play Knight here, if I had a guess, too. So I'm kind of regretting capture with the pawn right here because I wish my bishop was right here putting pressure on this pawn right here because his tactics, if my bishop has an open sight towards the king in that pawn right here. So I'm kind of regretting capture with the pawn and blocking in my own bishop. So I'm be happy to see this capture right here, to be honest. 
interesting. Well, I can get a couple of pawns for my troubles. This is an interesting position right here. I think my bishop, in a lot of ways, is a lot stronger than this knight right here. Plus, if I take, this pawn's now free to move, and then this bishop becomes a monster. And, you know, well, he might trade queens at that point, though. Or try to, rather. And the issue is, if the queens come off the board, this bishop's not going to be enough to, you know, defend. So I might have to play defensively for a little bit by playing this move here. So if it takes, yeah, so I think I'll have to play a little defensively. Now, if I go here, he does have this check, and that might be a little annoying, but I don't think it's going to be uh, groundbreaking, if you will. You can go check here, here, here. Oh, oh, that's that's nice. That's nice. I want to give my opponent the satisfaction. So I'm gonna wait. So nice. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play it out because I want my I want you guys to see the uh, the move right here. Knight here, check, and then you up a piece. So that's good. So I'm gonna resign. Uh, where's the resign button? Thanks for the extra game. That was a good move by him. I'll, I'll admit that was a really good move. I did not see. I mean. I wish I saw that, of course, but it was a little bit too late. No problem. Yeah, I'm on my losing these guys right here because he was very uh, respectful and he deserved a win. So hats off to him. I might uh, uh, frame request him real quick before I forget. Yeah, these kinds of players are very, very... Um, rare on very rare on um chess.com uh, just because a lot of people are just so cutthroat ruthless, uh, ruthless and they're they want to win no matter what so you know I, I wish i could have won that game but you know he was a good sport so i don't mind losing to someone who's a good sport so hopefully he uh, accepts my friend request. Let's go to analysis real quick. Yeah, so rip the dream, but um, I'm just kind of curious to see a couple of things real quick before I sign off. Interesting. Yeah, so that's why I thought Bishop takes is probably more accurate. Because we saw in the game how, I mean, my Bishop was basically a tall pawn. So after this move right here, he has no control over the position. So I mean, I mean, sure, the Knight has to move, but now my Bishop's just a weak piece at this point. So I should have took with the pawn. So in most situations, when your Bishop is outside the pawn chain like this, these pawns right here, you want to make sure he's active because now he is just not doing much at all. He's just, you know, staring at his own pawn. He can't attack around it and all that stuff. So it's bad for black here. All right. What was a better move here than that? Bishop takes on F3. All right, fair enough. 
think dubious D file was better. Oh, I see. So this is where oh G4 is better. Oh no, well, well, G4 is best for him. Bishop E8. D5 is interesting because you do hang the, the bishop, but you do get a lot of pawns though. That's the thing. And you do get to attack the king now. So that was an interesting idea right there. Okay. Okay. I wonder. So queen h4 was better? Yeah, because you're still attacking a pawn this way, and you avoid this whole check nonsense right there. Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, I'm going to pause recording, and I'm going to, of course, sign off for today. This, these were some good games. And, of course, the theme for today's uh, games was restricting your opponent's moves. So my opponent found a really good way of, so yes, I mean, this is force you have to take. And that's a really good tactic to be aware of, this uh, forking idea right here, to, you know, simplify and be up to exchange because this queen's not protected right here. So after a knight here, king moves, knight takes, he's up a piece. So it's going to be winning for him. So let me go ahead and stop the video and I'll talk more to my YouTube audience about this later on. Uh, well, one second. I'll talk more about this later on. So.